Gospel of Mark begins with these words. The beginning of the good news of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. As it is written in the prophet Isaiah, See, I am sending my messenger ahead of you who will prepare the way. The voice of one crying out in the wilderness, Prepare the way for the Lord. Make his paths straight. Today we begin the season of Advent and an opportunity for us to prepare a straight way for God. It's our hope and prayer that we would experience God's presence in our lives this Advent season. I hope and pray that you'll take that next step during this Advent season on your faith journey. Let's encourage each other to prepare a straight path for God. We believe that uh, everyone needs a church home, an extended family, an opportunity to help encourage one another to rejoice with those who rejoice and to weep with those who weep. And at times we're here to support each other. This morning I got a text message from Jackie saying she wasn't feeling well and uh, I've got it. And she wanted me to uh, use her prayer that she wrote for the uh, pastoral prayer. But a, an opportunity for us to encourage one another and uh, be there for each other to help each other out. And that's what an extended family does. We're also here to rejoice and to celebrate with one another. And afterwards, we're going to celebrate Jennifer and her family and the ministry that she's had with us. And we hope that you can join us down at the table. Uh, it's going to be a wonderful meal down there. Here it is. Italian sausage and artichoke penny pasta with yummy breadsticks. Yummy was my word. <laughs> and a gluten-free option is available. So no excuses today. Or you might be into waffles and bacon. And let me just say it all smells very yummy. There's angel food cake, I'm sure, because of Jennifer's celebration and being an angel. Very nice. <laughs> and other desserts. So we hope that you can join us. You know, it, it's to nourish our bodies physically, but it's also to nourish our souls with the fellowship. So please join us uh, down at the table. Later today, as we are preparing for Advent, our uh, children's ministry is uh, helping us with, along with partnering with some other ministry teams, a night in Bethlehem from three to five o'clock it's kind of a live nativity, but a way for us to help get back into what that might have looked like. And uh, we do hope that you will come. We uh, started this last year. It was a nice success. And we encourage it's not just for young um, children or families. It's for all of us uh, as part of God's family. So come and join us uh, 3 to 5 um, this afternoon. Then, coming up on Wednesday, we're beginning our Advent Noels, and uh, Todd has put together a nice uh, group of folks that will be helping uh, to share a 30-minute musical presentation, Wednesdays at noon, and uh, followed by soup and salad, and it's just a great kind of midweek to kind of get focused again, and uh, so we invite you to use it as an outreach. You might invite some people that maybe don't have a church home, or maybe this Christmas life is a little go and hear some wonderful music and have some fellowship around the table. And then next Sunday, Jennifer has put together a awesome Simply Christmas event. And let me just say, it's not as simply as simple or whatever. I don't know what that is. It's going to be a wonderful day. The choir is preparing some wonderful music, uh, putting that together. We have a, a snow machine. Um, there's going to be kind of a nice, uh, the table is going to be out here. It's going to be a wonderful event. You're not going to want to miss it. And uh, you just join us uh, for a terrific uh, time of song and music and words and fellowship. That's next Sunday, uh, Sunday morning. And then uh, today is the last day to order uh, poinsettias. Um, so you can fill this out and place it in the offering plate or uh, drop one by the church. And uh, that way you can honor uh, a relationship with a um, beautiful token gift. So let us stand and sing together hymn to Come Thou Long Expected Jesus.
Today is the first Sunday in Advent, and we begin by lighting the candle of hope. The people of Israel hoped in God's promises and deliverance. Dear God, in a world of chaos, war, famine, and disease, where children grow up as orphans, where families go hungry and struggle to survive, we call upon you to come and bring hope. In a world where so many have lost hope, we call upon you, Lord of hope, to come. In the season of Advent, we, we wait for the coming of hope into our world. We await the birth of the Christ child, the coming of God into our lives in a new way. Come, Messiah, come and save us. Hope is like a light shining in a dark place. As we look at the light of this candle, we celebrate the hope we have in Jesus Christ. Our family's hope is that when in this Advent season, so many people in this world are living through the deprivations of war that we are grateful for and mindful of the many blessings that God has given to each of us. Will you pray with us? Dear God, we pray for the hope that is in Christ to come into our lives in a new way. We also pray for all those going through a difficult season, experiencing chaos and darkness, wondering if they will be able to make it in life. May your hope come to them in a very real way. Also, inspire us to bring your life-giving hope to a world in need. Amen. guys. What's your favorite Christmas tune? It's beginning to look a lot like Christmas. Deck the halls with boughs of holly. Fa la 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 la. Oh, jingle bells, jingle bells, jingle all the way. And I, I, I am dreaming of a white Christmas. <laughs> Oh, Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer had a very shiny nose. I love a good Christmas song to celebrate, and these are a lot of fun. But I also love the carols that tell why we celebrate. Go tell it on the mountain, over the hills and everywhere. Go and tell it on the mountain that Jesus Christ is born. Or, hark the herald angels sing, glory to the newborn King. Peace on earth and mercy mild, God and sinners reconciled. Oh, come, let us adore him. Oh, come, let us adore him. Oh, come, let us adore 
him Christ the Lord. Christmas is when God sent his very own son, Jesus, to live with us. It's a key part of the rescue plan. It's the time God chose to make peace with us. When we celebrate what Christmas is truly about, others can see God at work, not just in us, but in the world around us. That's why choosing to celebrate the true meaning of Christmas is an amazing way to worship God with your life. Because worship is about more than just singing loud. It's all about living loud. Well, here we are at the beginning of our season of Advent. We have just lit, lit the candle of hope. And this song is all about that hope and that that hope has a name, Jesus. Breaking through the silence with glory in the highest, the hope of all creation, resting in his mother's arms. The song on the horizon, ring through the heavens, the long-awaited Savior. Come to set the captives free. Come to set the captives free. Come set us free. Hope has a name. Oh 
Sleep in Emily Peace, if you look at the back of our shirts, it says, no kid sleeps on the floor in our town. That was a motto that, well, it didn't start out as a motto. It started out after my very first bed delivery when I saw a kid, a child, six years old, had never slept on a bed and she's sleeping on uh, her clothes. And when I, I was so overcome from that situation on the way home, I told my friend that was with me, I said, you know what? No kid's gonna sleep on the floor in my town if I have anything to do with it. And we made that our motto. But I tell you what I did find out is, that's a nice motto, but it needed to be a mission statement. And it needed to be a mission statement made by the communities, because that's where these problems get solved. Not by some farm kid from Idaho. It, it's, it's solved by the community. So our, our mission statement now, no kids sleep on the floor in our town. And I'm so glad you're making this town your town, because Kids are sleeping on the floor. Three percent of the total population represents child bedlessness. How many people knew that there's children sleeping on the floor, or at least to this magnitude? Probably not very many. If you were like me, I had no clue. It is a real problem, and it's solved by the people in this room, and it's solved by the people you talk to when you go home. That's how we spread. That's how we solve these problems nationwide, and we need your help to do that. Our giving tree is an opportunity for us to bring hope in tangible ways as we partner with the various ministries that are working to help transform our world. So thank you for already um, folks who have purchased uh, gifts that will make a difference in the lives of people. Let's take a few moments for silent prayer and then I'll lead us in our prayers and the Lord's Prayer. Let us pray. <clears throat> Eternal God, during this season of Advent, help us prepare Christ's way in a world that has moved far from his dream for us. Help us center our hearts, minds, and prayers on your holy presence in our midst. God of hope, hear our prayers. As the days grow short and the nights loom long, we praise you for these seasonal reminders that there is time for work and for rest. For those of us who know warm houses, soft places to sleep, we give thanks for these precious gifts. We pray for those who are unhoused or those whose home is unsafe, those who do not have food for their tables or those who are financially insecure. May all your children get the rest and nourishment they need to thrive. God of hope, hear our prayers. Divisiveness and conflict plague us, and as wars and rumors of wars betray our addiction to violence, our destructive and dehumanizing ways. We deserve your judgment and condemnation, yet you remain faithful, a steadfast source of peace during our warring madness. Holy God, give us the strength and ingenuity to focus on the generosity kindness, and care you encourage within us. Give us the desire to reach outside our own little world so that we may be present for others who need help. 
as we contemplate the vulnerability of Christ, born a fragile infant in a violent world. Let us drop our facades and the masks of strength we hide behind. Return us to Christ and his path for peace. May the season of Advent prepare us to celebrate the strength that can be found in weakness and the power held in humility and love. God of hope, hear our prayers. As your people gather in homes and churches to celebrate this season, let us be reminded for all the reasons we have to rejoice in you. Let us be reminded of your protective presence, of your gentleness and love, of your peace which passes all understanding. Guard our hearts and minds this Advent, Savior God, so we can rejoice over your faithfulness through Jesus Christ, our Lord. God of hope, hear our prayers. As a people of faith, we lift these prayers to you, trusting you hear us and receive us. Finally, hear us now as we pray the prayer Christ taught us by saying together, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the power and the glory forever. Amen.
beautiful. I think all of us have that yearning for God with us. Thank you, choir and Jennifer. <clears throat> Normally at this point in the worship service, the preacher or scripture reader exhorts the congregation to listen for God's word for you today. I was thinking about that statement. Someone might interpret that line that God's word is hidden somewhere in the scripture and you need to listen for it. Do you have ears to hear? But what if I said God sent me a specific message to give to you? Would you listen more intently? Maybe. Let's try it. God sent me to send a message for you. Listen for God's word for you this day. 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 13. Therefore, prepare your minds for action. Discipline yourselves. Set all your hope on the grace that Jesus Christ will bring you when he is revealed. Like obedient children, do not be conformed to the desires that you formerly had in ignorance. Instead, as he who called you is holy, be holy yourselves in all your conduct. For it is written, you shall be holy, for I am holy. Friends, this is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Will you pray with me? Gracious God, we don't want to just go through the motions, but believe that you do have a message for each of us in your word. So free us from those things that may be clouding our minds so that we can hear your word tailor-made for us this day. We pray all these things in the strong name of Jesus the Christ. Amen. <clears throat> well, what is it that you want for Christmas? I thought I'd go to the internet and see what the popular gifts are for this year. A light bulb camera for your outside front door instead of a doorbell camera. It's a popular item. You might want to think about it. Miracle sheets, and this is how it is described. Literally the cleanest sheets ever invented. I thought that was kind of interesting. The Black Falcon 4K drone. It costs less than $100, but it's better than those costing hundreds or hundreds of dollars more. The Sinoshi Power Spin Scrubber. Honey, close your ears. A genius invention that cleans everything in your house, and my wife is all over it, I can tell already. The Thermalux Heated Vest. It will keep you warm throughout the winter. Any golfers? The Flight Path Golf Tee. The world's most advanced golf tee. It's a must-have for golfers. It will help you hit longer and straighter. Go golf tees. The Chill Pill. Don't let that mislead you. It's a handheld device that helps you fall asleep in minutes. It's a new handheld device that you hold in your hand while you go to sleep. It sends safe electronic pulses that calm your brain and help lull you into a deep sleep in just minutes. All of us want a good night's sleep, right? I was all in on the chill pill sleeping aid until I reread the line about it sending safe electronic pulses to your brain. I know me. After receiving one, I could imagine me holding it tight going, I wonder if that was a safe or an unsafe pulse that just went to my brain and it would keep me up all night. Well, today I'm beginning a new Advent sermon series entitled Delivering Presence. It's a little play on word because I'm using the word presence, P-R-E, 
S E N C E instead of presence, P R E S E N T S. The reality for many of us is that there are so many presents out there that unfortunately sometimes the true meaning of Christmas is hiding under some wrapping paper. The true gift of Christmas is not some new trendy gift that supposedly can, you can hit the ball farther or straighter or a handheld device that can make you sleep better. The true gift of Christmas is just what we heard when the choir sang Emmanuel, God with us. That the word became flesh and dwelt among us. That the true gift is that God became human. The best present ever is that God came in Jesus to become Emmanuel. And God's presence with us changes everything. In this incredible present, we're delivered to new life, eternal life. The new gift delivers us from sin and guilt and offers us grace and peace. So I hope as we look at different key watchwords this Advent season, that we would experience God's delivering presence in our lives as we look at hope today, peace, joy, love, and light. It's my hope and prayer that we will grow closer to God during this Advent season. I don't want you to miss it. I don't want you to just go through the motions. I don't want to just go through the motions. But I believe this delivering presence is not only a gift for us to receive, but is also a gift for us to to offer others. Don't we know that the best gifts we receive are the ones we actually use? Delivering presents means that we too are going to give to others. A present that we can offer to deliver someone else. The last few weeks we've been looking at the prayer of St. Francis and becoming a channel of God's peace and Affirming it is in giving that we receive. So the next step for us is to deliver presents to others. How can you, how can me, how can, how can we become channels of God's delivering presence this Advent season? Let's take a closer look at the scripture today. Verse 13 says, Therefore prepare your minds for action, Discipline yourselves. Set all your hope on the grace that Jesus Christ will bring you when he is revealed. Another translation says, Therefore, with minds that are alert and fully sober, set your hope on the grace to be brought to you when Jesus Christ is revealed at his coming. You and I are to set our hope on Jesus Christ. And although that there are many distractions during this Advent season, I don't want you to be caught up in the Christmas rush that you miss it. You and I are to set our hope on God's grace. The children of Israel all throughout Scripture had their hope in the coming Messiah that would deliver them from their enemies, that would help transform the situation that they were in. One season, long season, was when the Israelites were in exile, hoping that God would sustain them sometime through this difficult circumstance. And I imagine if we had time to share with one another, each of us could share those challenging circumstances that we are confronted with in our own lives. We know that there are many living without a sense of hope, I shared with you on my last visit to Cuba, I met with a local pastor who grew up in the First Presbyterian Church of Havana, and we were talking about some of the challenges that the Cuban people face. 250,000 Cubans leave every year, not just to come to our nation, but to go out all throughout the world. Literally, families are being torn apart, separated, that they might not see again. 
Those that have the resources and the money can maybe find a new chapter in another country, but for many, they don't have that option. And it's very challenging. And bottom line, the pastor described that there's literal hope. And we talked about that as, a, as pastors. Here we're supposed to be offering people a hope. You would think that everybody would want to participate in to find that hope. But people struggle. We watch what is happening in the Middle East and what is happening in the Ukraine and we turn on the news to see what is happening in the U.S., and don't we hope it would be better? Dostoevsky wrote, To live without hope is to cease to live. Desmond Tutu wrote, Hope is being able to see that there is light despite all of the darkness. And Martin Luther King Jr. wrote, We must accept finite disappointment, but never lose infinite hope. It's amazing what hope can do in our lives. Everett Worthington, a professor emeritus at Virginia Commonwealth University, a psychologist who spent his career studying forgiveness and hope, writes, I've studied positive psychology, forgiveness, wellness, and the science of hope for more than 40 years. Hope can erode when we perceive threats to our way of life, and these days plenty are out there. As we age, we may struggle with a tragic loss or chronic disease. As we watch the news, we see our political system polarized, hopelessly locked in chaos. When there is no hope, when people cannot picture a desired end to their struggles, they lose the motivation to endure. This past week, I heard from Steve Wilde, who's preached in our pulpit many times, and he shared about a young 19-year-old took his life in suicide. Psychologists tell us hope involves activity. It's not just a Pollyannish optimism, but a can-do attitude and belief that we have a pathway to a desired outcome. Hope is the willpower to change and the way power to bring about that change. Part of it is setting our focus and experiencing God's presence in our life to help us during challenging times, maybe times we feel like we are in exile. First Peter continues, Like obedient children, do not be conformed to the desires that you formerly had in ignorance. Isn't it a challenge for us, even when we hear titles like Simply Christmas? Because we add so many activities. Hey, by the way, can you come at 3 to 5 o'clock today? We have a night in Bethlehem. It's going to be awesome. Also, on Wednesday, if you're not doing anything, come to the church, and there's a beautiful Advent Noel. It'll help you focus during Advent. And, and next week, we're going to have the Simply Christmas thing. It's going to be simply beautiful. You won't want to miss it. And we add and add and add. And then we wonder why we're tired. Setting up Christmas lights. My favorite thing to do all year. Isn't it yours? (laughs) Setting our hope on Christ. And not being conformed, not buying into it that thought that it's all about giving the right gift as if that's going to make up for our presence with someone. How do you build hope? Harvard recently published a study where researchers examined the impact of hope on nearly 13,000 people with an average age of 66. They found those with more hope throughout their lives had better physical health, better health behaviors, better better social support, and a longer life, fewer chronic health problems, and less depression. 
So if we believe that hope is good for us in the long run, how do you, how do you build hope in your life? How do you increase it? Everett Worthington, the one who studied the science of hope for 40 years, came up with the following. Four suggestions. Attend a motivational speech. This doesn't count as one of those. Or watch, read, or listen to one online through YouTube, a blog, or a podcast. That increases hope, although usually the fix is short-lived. Second, engage with a religious or spiritual community. Huh. Maybe everyone does need a church home. This has worked for millennia. Amidst a community of like believers, people have drawn strength, found peace, and experienced the elevation of the human spirit spirit just by knowing there is something or someone much larger than them. Third way, forgive. Participating in a forgiveness group, completing a forgiveness do-it-yourself workbook, builds hope, say scientists. It reduces depression, anxiety, increases your capacity to forgive. That's true even with long-held grudges. I've personally found that successfully forgiving someone provides a sense of both the willpower and the way power to change. Finally, choose a hero of hope. Some have changed history. Nelson Mandela endured 27 years of imprisonment, yet persevered to build a nation. Franklin Roosevelt brought hope to millions for a decade during the Great Depression. Our hope isn't something found in a little gift. Our hope is found in the grace of Christ. And as we wait during this Advent season, it's not passive. We're told to not be conformed, but to be intentional about how we spend our time. Setting our hope on Christ helps us focus on Christ and Christ's life. We experience Christ's grace as we focus on Christ and we're able to share it with others. Eugene Peterson says this, so roll up your sleeves, get your head in the game, be totally ready to receive the gift that's coming when Jesus arrives. Don't lazily slip back into those old grooves of evil doing just what you feel like doing. You didn't know any better than you do now. As obedient children, let yourselves be pulled into a way of life shaped by God's life, a life energetic and blazing with holiness. God said, I am holy, you be holy. That Greek word for holy is hagios, and it literally means set apart or different. Advent's an opportunity for us to consider a different way of doing life, maybe that is more Christ-focused, so that we can be alert We can have sober minds. We can focus on being different and not conformed to the world. And I believe as we experience God's presence in our lives, then we can be an instrument to bring hope to others. That's what the Sleep in Heavenly Peace mission is all about, delivering hope. Thomas and I and Gary were looking at in April of having another opportunity for our whole congregation to participate. Hundreds, literally, already. But a way to deliver hope. The living water ministry that is in the giving tree is a way to bring tangible hope. Just talked to a couple of our members who participated and how powerful that experience was to bring water to people in need. It's delivering hope. It's not just about only receiving. But Advent gives a time to give hope to others. I don't know about you, but I was so pleased when we saw some of those reunions between families who lost each other back on October 7th. 
and you could see and hear. And for some, they were holding on to the hope that again, that they would be reunited. And some of those reunions were just powerful. Are there ways that you and I can bring hope to people in need? Are there ways for us to connect with the giving tree? Or are there ways for us to use things like the Advent Noels or next Sunday Simply Christmas that reaches out to someone who has lost some hope? Maybe he's lost a loved one or going through a tough season that maybe God can use you to deliver hope. Will you pray with me? Silently, I invite you to think of someone that would benefit from hearing a word of hope. Ask God in your own heart how you might be a channel of God's peace. Gracious God, we do ask that during this Advent season, our focus would be on you and your presence. And that we wouldn't just keep that present to ourselves, but we would look for ways this Advent season to share your presence in tangible ways with others. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Our affirmation of faith this morning is the Apostles' Creed. Let us stand and affirm what we believe together. I believe in God the Father Almighty maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He ascended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated. As the ushers are coming forward, think about ways that you can deliver hope this Advent season. God bless you as you give your morning tithes.
Friends, this table reminds us of God's hope, God's presence with us. We believe in a mysterious yet tangible way that Christ is present with us, and it's our hope and prayer that as we partake of Christ's meal that we would experience Christ's presence in our lives. Will you pray with me? Gracious God, we are grateful for your invitation to your table. We pray that as we partake of this sacrament, what we say may be your word and what we do may be your work. Draw all of us closer to your son, Jesus, and it's in his strong name we pray. Amen. On the night of Jesus' arrest, he took bread, and after giving thanks, he broke it, and he said, This is my body, which is broken for you. When you eat of it, remember me. And in a like manner, he took the cup. And again, after giving thanks, he said, This cup is the new covenant, sealed in my blood, shed for the forgiveness of sins. When you drink of it, remember me. As often as you eat this bread and you drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. They say we are what we eat. May it be so. The gifts of God for the people of God. Would the elders come forward? Pray with me. 
Gracious God, we thank you for nourishing us at your table, for filling us with your grace so that we can share it with others. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Well, today we're going to celebrate Jennifer's ministry along with her family uh, for over five and a half years. So Jennifer and family, do you mind coming on up? Perfect. Come on up here. And where's Larry? Larry, you can Donna. How about right over here? Perfect. And if you could light the Advent candle and sing the anthem and take care of a couple other things, that would be really helpful. Okay? Yeah, right there. Perfect. So we have a few little uh, tokens of our appreciation. Uh, Jennifer has the gift of passion and faith and caring and I know a lot of us have received a little special note that was personal and helpful and encouraging. And over the last five and, and a half years has helped pastor the choir and the band and help us in music ministry in many ways. And for that, we're grateful. So we have a few little gifts for you. Donna? Oh, wait. Let me, oh, you got it? There you go. And this chic designer box is also for you. A great deal of expense was spared in obtaining this box. <laughs> the contents of this chic designer box, however, are priceless. <laughs> it contains notes of appreciation, thanks, and good wishes from your Northwoods friends. Enjoy. Thank you. Thank you, Donna. As Paul said, for the past five and a half years, Jennifer's contributions to the worship service and the quality of our music has been tremendous. Uh, she's used her skills, her talents, and her compassionate spirit to deliver that to us. So we thank her so much for that. When you want to thank someone for their service, you want to think of, you want to refer to the attributes and characteristics that they have that made that successful. And so I had my own short list of things to, to mention, but I didn't want to leave anything uncovered. So I sent an email to the choir about three weeks ago and said, when you think of Jennifer, what is your lasting impression of her? Give me one word or give me a phrase that, that describes that. And I got a tremendous response, so thank you for that, choir members. And what I'd like to do is, uh, this was all over the map, so I'd like to categorize those. <laughs> as follows, job and work related. Now, each one of these attributes could be followed by an example. Anybody in the choir could say, I remember when she did so and so that, that characterized that. So job and work related, she is dedicated, hardworking, prepared, organized, oh my gosh, <laughs> thorough, effective and efficient, innovative, determined, and wonderfully creative. The next category would be to describe her gifts. She's a talented director, singer, musician, and composer. She is intelligent, an articulate communicator. She's passionate, and she is spiritual. Finally, let's look at what comes under supportive. She is caring and compassionate, always thinking of others. She's inclusive, encouraging, inspiring, and she delivers wonderful prayers in support of others experiencing concerns or dealing with health issues. On a lighter note, one of the choir members said, Jennifer is perky. <laughs> she is one petite, perky gal. <laughs> so in summary, Jennifer, we think you're awesome. The total package, a true servant leader, and we've been blessed to have you for the past five and a half years. Thank you so much. But 
wait, there's more. There is a little gift from the church to help you fund a getaway weekend or a number of Astros tickets or whatever, whatever you need it for. So thank you again from the church. You're welcome. Well, actually, this is for some Astros tickets. And uh, th that can be used uh, and uh, pick the date, and that should be a lot of fun. Uh, the Yankees are opening the season here uh, this next year. She's, their family's a big Astros fan. Uh, they're fans, so we hope that you'll do that. Uh, we're so grateful, Jennifer, for all your love and all your support, all, the, all your grace and passion that you poured into our church. So thank you very much. Let's have a, a prayer of thanksgiving. <laughs> You can applaud later. Okay, we're going to pray. Let's pray. Gracious God, we are so grateful that you call people uh, and give people to use those gifts in ministry. We're grateful for Jennifer and for her family of the ways that they've shared their gifts as well. We pray your blessing upon her as she begins a new chapter. We pray that you would bless her and help uh, overflow her with your grace and love that she can experience your presence in her life. We pray all these things in your son's strong name. Amen. Can we give a clap offering to God? And we're, and we're not even talking about all she did during COVID. But I wanted to thank you. Um, everything that was said about me could be said about you. You have been so life-giving to me and, and to my family. And I am so grateful for the opportunity to serve alongside you um, and to worship our wonderful God together. So thank you for welcoming me and our family into your midst and embracing us as you have. It's, um, it is very difficult to leave, but come next week. It's going to be fun. <laughs> <laughs> Let's stand and sing our final hymn again. I'm confused. <laughs> Say again. Oh, they have a little number for her? Oh, yeah, perfect. Is. We have a little number. Go for it. the benediction and we sing the final benediction response all right oh say again oh
on my way. Don't know where I'm going on my way. Take the time that I do the matter of See me in New York down by the sea. See me in New York down by the sea. See me in New Fast to what is good. Love one another with mutual affection. Now do one another in showing honor. Do not lag in zeal. Be ardent in spirit. Serve the Lord. Be patient in suffering. Persevere in prayer. Rejoice with those who rejoice. Weep with those who weep. If it is possible, so far as it depends on you, live peaceably with all. And all God's children said, Amen. And we're going to sing the benediction response. Amen.